All right, we're good. So what's up, fellas? Uh, not I'm much. Good. How are you doing? Uh, you know, man, it's true. A bit tired lately, man. It's funny, man. My job is way less physical. The service writer's job, but I'm sleeping way more. Way more man. Heck yeah, man. I'm I'm sitting on the chair, you know, trying to watch watch a game or watch YouTube, and I'm just <laughs> cracking out, man. What about you, Kyle? You've been working on the house, no? Yeah, a little bit. I, but I've been doing a lot more stuff that I haven't been videoing. It's been like YouTube shorts and Instagram stories. But Is that yeah, uh, no, it's my buddies. Oh, you're working at his house or what? Yeah, did uh, motor mounts in his truck. What kind of truck does he have? Uh, nine nine Frontier. With a right. five speed. With a three point three? Yeah. We're gonna lot of those. I'm actually supposed to have one that they wanna do the head gaskets on, but I don't know. Uh no, no, I take that back. Three point three is a six, right? The V six, yeah. Yeah, this is a inline four. Mm. I don't think of on the fronts here? Yeah. I don't think I've seen one of those. Actually. A frontier? There's a four cylinder frontier? Yeah. That's no no Titan's the big truck, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's the Titan. Yeah, okay, I was gonna say I didn't think Titan either. there was okay, yeah, I was confused for a second. <laughs> <sighs> so you were working on, on Sunday night till eight thirty, huh? That's crazy, dude. Yeah. What were you working on, Davion? Me or uh, uh, oh me? You, you told me you were working. You called me at eight thirty. I said, "Yeah, I'm done. I'm going to go eat, and I'll be back." I'm like, oh, your time that was eight thirty. Oh yeah, that was um. No, I was just busy all day today. Actually, I checked a couple cars, and then I went to sleep really late last night. I only slept for a couple hours, and I got up early, and I went and had breakfast with my grandpa. Went and checked a car. And then uh, came home. I had a car waiting for me to be worked on. Just needed an alternator, but I was already tired. It was hot outside, so I was just relaxing, just cruising it, taking my time, take the belt off, go see what my friend was doing because he was working on his car. You know, just a little bit of time, and then I had to wait for O'Reilly's to get parts. And then I ordered the parts, like, the day before, and they just still didn't get them, so. Man, I hate when that happens. So when you, there, you said O'Reilly's, man. Is that your go-to part store when you're you're working? Um, yeah, if if like not putting OEM stuff, whatever, O'Reilly's is where I like to go to. I don't like Napa or Advance or AutoZone. I can't stand yeah. AutoZone. I'm I'm pretty much the same, man. If I'm not using OEM parts, or I mean, if I have to use someone else, I will. But O'Reilly is absolutely my first call. That I mean, and I, I, or online. I don't like online at all. Oh no. Yeah, well, it depends. If I can get OEM parts online cheap, I will. But but yeah, I really don't. I really don't go for online. Other than See, that. For me, it's like O'Reilly's, AutoZone, Napa in that order. Uh, I think I go with Napa before I go with AutoZone. I, it's I, just because there's not Napa super close to me. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I think AutoZones came in clutch once because I was working like on a 2020 or like a 2019 Nissan Rogue or something like that, and they needed brakes. Like they went through their brakes really fast, um, so I needed brakes. And I, this was like in 2019, so it was like a brand new car, and AutoZone was actually the only place that had the brakes besides the dealer, and the customer didn't want to pay for the dealer brake pads, even though they weren't that much, but. <laughs> I mean, that was the only time I go to AutoZone if, if I can't find something at a different parts store. So. Yeah, that's pretty much all I like. I said, I, I always go to O'Reilly's first. Uh, when I'm at work, um, we go to something called Cal State, which which gets us a lot of like OEM parts. We will go dealer if, if, if it's like in a rush. And Cal State's, you know, we, they, we get deliveries from Cal State. Like three, four times a day. Mm -hmm. We get deliveries from World Pack like two, three times a day. But uh, they're they're like the first two we check. 
at work. World yeah, pack in the paper bags. Yeah. Yeah, world, world pack. So, I mean, go ahead. Yeah, World Pack. We've actually never got stuff from World Pack. We got a lot of, well, we don't, but uh, next door, literally, we're connected by a hallways of Body Shop, Collision Repair, and they got a lot of stuff from LKQ. Oh, like Body Shop, I imagine, yeah. They're, they're trying to replace yeah. body parts. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't mean, know about like. Char charging for. Dealership price for a for a body panel. Okay, you say my butt once, and we'll get to that. But one thing about Napa is they sell a lot of tools in in house. Like that's the big thing with Napa. Yeah, I think Napa's pretty good. I'm like they have like really good um, tools. Like I guess like when you need tools, you can go into their store and they have like a better quality of tools versus like the other parts stores and then they usually have really good deals sometimes so yeah good deals. from what i hear carlisle stuff's pretty good i've never personally owned a carlisle tool but like the uh i know davion i think jude you have them, the like seven inch uh snap on stripper oh. crimpers <laughs> i was like whoa, whoa you're getting personal dude <laughs> see we have seven inch <laughs> <laughs> that crimpers. Oh, like like I have some orange. It's got ones. the crimper on the front, and then the strippers and the cutters by the handle. I yeah, don't have those. My my name is uh, SK. Don't don't ask, I have, this, like, this wasn't a setup. I just saw the catalog out of the corner of my eye. The ones I have it. They're like they have like a little dikes, and then they have a crimper. And then that's it. They're just and then like the orange, they're like the regular snap on pliers. I, I have those ones too. The orange and black. They're, they're little dikes and different person. It's it's yeah. I think I got mine off the Macro truck, but they're probably rebranded. I'm sure they are if I got them off the Macro truck. Please. Yeah, see those. I don't have those. Yeah, I, I've actually thought about them, but then I don't know if they're like any good. Um, country no, mile says they're really good. I believe it was country mile. Yeah, I don't, I don't own those either. They, they were on my watch list, but uh, I've got the – my SK ones I've had for years are pretty good, um, and I just got a couple pairs of those Jico ones. Hey, you guys, uh, I wasn't sure who was going to make it and who wasn't, so I sent out a couple of invitations. This is, I guess, what, what do we call it when it's they're not a they're not part of TTS? A special uh, guest? Special guest. Yeah, special guest. So you guys uh, – I know Kyle knows him. I don't think you've ever met him before, though. Maybe on, it's Miguel Martinez. Oh yeah, I talked to him. What's up, buddy? I haven't talked to him in a while. Hey, how you doing, guys? What's oh, going on, no, Miguel? No, yeah. oh, oh, there you go. Oh, he's got it. Nice got it. Hey, you're upside down. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, I was gonna ask you, Davion. I know you were talking about your 18 millimeter gear wrench. My 18 millimeter? The uh, one that's stuck in warranty. On my gear wrench one, for like a, like a wrench or the like regular, a the wrench. I don't remember. Just uh, a regular eighteen ratchet wrench. I have I have like a okay I have, well I have a flex head but I haven't had yeah. to go into it. You said yeah, a gear wrench product stuck in warranty or something. Uh, Kyle's, Kyle's going to, back. I, he's going back I, in your catalog, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't have to think about that one. I don't think I do. I, I oh, you know what? Post... I think you post oh. on your Instagram. Oh, that's got my phone. I don't know. Gear wrench, gear wrench. I know the only problems I've had with gear wrench were their their X core U joints. I can, I don't like those. I went through like a couple of sets. And they all did the same thing. And I got the I Maco ones. Know. And the Macos are. Hey, you know that what you just did will, will get you kicked out of a Chicago Cubs game? This? Yeah. I guess that's <laughs> kind of racist now. Or if you do it upside down or something like that. It's... Really? 
Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what it means, but but it got some some people kicked out of the most expensive seats right behind home plate. Uh, a player did it, so the, the people started doing it, but the theater right behind home plate, they kept getting caught on camera, so they went and kicked them out of the game. What? That's crazy. Huh. I wonder what that means. I got to look it up. What is yeah, it? I'm not sure. It's the OK sign, but I think it's the OK sign upside down. You know, I think I remember, <laughs> well, I remember it, reading, when, when, reading when about that. When you did it upside down, it's yeah. like, like M. Like M is for the Mara, the, the, the Santa America uh, game. Oh, um, is that what it's related on for, for that for those guys yeah. from South? What are yeah, they called? For the the S the S thirteen. S thirteen. MS thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, crazy! But I don't know if it's related to it or not. But yeah, normally that's what they do. They they stick the three fingers down. Now I even remember. I remember something last year, like around twenty twenty. I remember someone saying that like like doing this was like a racist sign now. Yeah. Like now, now, now I remember now you saying that that, and I can't remember I can't remember what it was. I, I don't know if it had to do with like white power or something like that. Or, oh man, maybe that's what it was. Like this like, way, yeah. Like or you I don't know. WP, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean that 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 one just like like passing you know the the little sticky icky thing. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the the weed. I don't know. That's just like my okay. Like it's. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I know what it means. <laughs> I know. Hey, Miguel, like, we, were just, we were just talking about I me. Mean, everyone, for I know you guys know him, but um, everybody watching doesn't know Miguel. It's Miguel Martinez, uh, DI, no, Angel DIY on, on Instagram or on YouTube. Or, he doesn't really do YouTube videos, but I think his YouTube channel called Angel DIY. Yeah. Is that right, Miguel? I, I haven't decided to post anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we've been. Um, we were talking about our go-to. You work as a, you're a mobile mechanic. You work on your own. You work for yourself. Yeah. Who do you who do you go to first? We were talking about parts stores. You know, when when you're fixing a car, you call Riley's AutoZone. You call the dealer. Napa. Yeah, normally it's a uh, uh, O'Reilly uh, yeah. AutoZone. That's the most uh, like convenience stores near me, and uh, most of the time uh, I rely on the people who works on the stores too. There's some guys that you know they give you the like uh, I don't know or you have to bring you the specific number or something. I like if you want, I can bring you the whole car and show you what I need. Yeah, you need so you need. Yeah. Oh, you maybe. Need to Customer <laughs> service is a big thing. Yeah, yeah, and when you find the guy that you know they actually want 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 to do the work or maybe the research, and you kind of stick there for a little bit, unless we unless you have to go straight to the dealer and well. Then the customers, if the customer you know can afford the parts, I mean, you can never go around with with the dealer part. Yeah, that's very true. But sometimes I've actually I've I've been seeing that a lot lately. I, mean, like, uh, I always post about you know using OEM and stuff, and like I always see people like message me or comments like you're lucky you get to use OEM, and uh, and like I guess like a lot of people don't have access to OEM parts even if like. Like the closest dealership is yeah. maybe a couple, like, thousand, like, couple hundred yeah. miles away. Like, like, oh, yeah. like, yeah, like over here, I have, the, I have the the Ford. It's what like a couple miles away. Every time I call them to ask for for a part, they tell me you have to go uh, North Austin, maybe San Marcos, or San Antonio. I like. You got a small deal. If I need it. Yeah, if I need the part, I mean, I have to do the drive all the way to the North uh, Austin area <laughs> or San Marcos. Sometimes go to San Antonio, too. No, really. And, it's not worth it. Do you charge gas? <laughs> and, I, I wish, I mean, it, it's, it's hard for the customer, you know, paying yeah. you where you charge you for labor. And then when you tell them, I mean, it's going to take me time to get your part. It's going to take me this and Unless you want to bring the parts, and you know, uh, if you bring the parts, it's something wrong with it, or you know, it's, it fails, you have to pay me twice. They're like, well, you so, get the parts, well, I need to charge a little extra, and they don't like that. <laughs> so, my thing is, I have no guarantee on customer supplied parts. Oh, absolutely not. I'll put a customer supplied part on, I don't care if it's right out of the box. But it, but if it fails and it lead and the diagnosis leads me to that, if it leads me to that direction, 
I tell them, all right, man, I'll, I'm going to go back into it. If I find out it's the part, then you got to pay me. You know, if I left something else, if I did something wrong on my way to that part, well, then I'll, I'll eat it. I'll own it. But yeah. if it's the part, um, and you used to fly the part. See, I like how, like, all, all three of you are on the same page. Me and, me and Diagnostic Dennis, Dennis, we were talking about this last night the other day. Uh, not the other day. We were actually talking about this last night. Um, about about that, you know, when, you know, customer brings up parts. And usually, the like, majority of the three, you know, three of y'all, y'all going to say, I'm not going to warranty. I'm not going to redo that work for free. Um, you know, it's, sometimes that's part of the business. You know, usually, um, I'll, I'll get that, you know, customer will bring a part, I'll replace whatever, and it fails. And I'm like, hey, that part failed. Um, I'll do it again. You know, if it gets to a part where it's like, they're doing it again. Like, hey, I'm gonna have to charge you. Like, I already did this. I've already replaced you for this, and I'm telling you, it's because you're putting this part. And I've had that happen where I'm replacing things, and I'm like, dude, you got to stop putting this part. Like, it's, it's no good. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, it's like usually it's, it's like coils that are plug with excessive gap. You know. Yeah, you know, or I mean, and like, and like Dennis says, it's 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 the cost of doing business. You know, if you want to keep that customer, you know, yeah, you know, hey, and especially if it's like a regular, because I have a, a bunch of regulars, and like, and a bunch of those regulars send me yeah, well, new people, you know, so I want yeah, to take of, care of them. Yeah. Well, the so. other part, you're getting like new new customers. Sometimes uh, you get those customers; they're already being like ripped off a few times in different places. You know, and they're like, "Are you sure it's gonna? Be, I'm gonna need, let's say, a fuel pump." Are you sure it's gonna be the fuel pump? I already did, you know, the pressure test, uh, power ground, and it's just pointing straight to the fuel pump. And and what if it's not a fuel pump, but it's gonna be the fuel pump? It, either way, before <laughs> I install the part, I'm gonna pull out the fuel pump, and, you know, and test it outside once it's already outside. And uh, I don't know, because the you know the fuel pump they go up from like 250 up to 500 bucks depending on yeah on that year model. <clears throat> and they're like, no, I, I just went to a, to a shop and they replaced this part and it wasn't that one. So they made me buy another part and three or four parts, parts later and this, the car still doesn't run. So are you sure it's going to be this one for sure? I like, yeah, you it's going to be that one. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, the other day I ran to us, if you guys watch my shorts, I mentioned the Honda Accord with the OT sensor code. So what yeah. was it? They went to AutoZone and did that free diagnostic. I put mm -hmm. diagnostic loosely because they pull the code and tell you what it is. And it was a uh, code for the uh, downstream O2 heater. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's great, but there's other things I have to do. You know, gar yeah. not guarantee that that's a problem, but make sure that's a problem. I mean, if you want to go off that, sure, we'll throw an O2 sensor at it. Or if you want me to do a little bow diagnostic, we can do that too. They opted for a little bow diagnostic, and sure enough, it led to the same result. But, you know, I looked at uh, dab pins for voltage and current, and sure enough, it was open circuit, so. Well, I mean, it's just, it's just about being 100% uh, on what the problem is and not throwing parts at it. Yeah, I mean, you want to be thorough, man. I, that's why I, I like diagnostic Dennis. Like he's uh he's very, him and uh, Kyle Cable Diag whatever. Those are, there's a bunch of others, but I like those two a lot. Uh, I mean, they're just very like precise on like this is the problem and this is why I could confirm this is the problem. You know it. You know it's just it's sad, but most mechanics are. Over parts glorified changers. parts changers, you know, that's what I am right now, and I'm working on not being that, but, I mean, see, it's a, but, it's a t process, I guess. See, but the only thing is, I guess you're willing to admit it and willing to do something, but everyone else is like, no, nah, it's fine, I fix the car, I don't care, you know. Yeah, I think there's a lot of that, too, it's like, well, it worked, like, yeah. and what if it didn't, you know what I mean? And and the part of that reason is just because that's what happened to me. Oh, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. So I'm, I'm over here throwing money because I don't know, and you're not fixing my problem. Well, well, the other you part know. of it is 
like you said, overqualified parts changers. You go to Identifix or all that or whatever, and it has a trouble tree. Does it have this code? Yes, replace this part. Does the problem still exist? Replace this part, you know, and... Well, well, that's, 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 thing. That, that's like... A, that's, that, that's Identifix throwing parts at it right there. Yeah, exactly. But the technician may or may not know any better, so... I think I think those are people follow those should take those with a grain of salt. It's more just to kinda like give you information about other Texas discovered, you know. Yeah. It's more like researching okay. What I do like about this is you, you get a lot of texts there, they'll put um their At test procedures. Direction. Yeah, they're like, Well, I checked this and this if it's doing this, you know. And yeah. um I don't know, I think the way the automotive industry is going I mean, we definitely, definitely, I mean, even now we should be learning how to read waveforms and understand the more engine performance, you know, like mm -hmm. really understanding, you know, how how much flow and volume and I don't know, it's a, there's a lot more to it than just nuts and bolts, you know what I mean? Yeah, the guy's like, like oh, yeah. Dag Dag's not the tennis. I talked to him a lot too. And it's funny, man. You don't. He doesn't post anything on Instagram without you seeing his, his. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure. Right? What's he using? A picoscope, but or a picoscope. Yeah, he's got a picoscope. But he's got these wires everywhere. Same thing with like uh, the the frugal prepper, man. Everything is about waveforms, and 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 that absolutely works. I mean, it's a proven way to diagnose. But at the same time. Um, it's very expensive. It's, it's, one. No, not just that, but I mean, shoot, it, it doesn't matter if it's expensive, man. If, it, if, it's, if, it's, if, if, if that's how you diagnose them, when you're diagnosing them correctly, boom, that doesn't matter. Just it, it, it's making you money, so it's going to pay for itself eventually. But I mean, pinpoint tests and wiring diagrams, man. You know, but not everybody's. Uh, has access to pinpoint tests because pinpoint tests usually come with factory uh, books. But if you have access to pinpoint tests and 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 you the factory wiring diagrams, man, you can, you can fix anything. Now, sometimes when you're following a pinpoint test, you need to break out a scope because it tells you to break out a scope. But you you can definitely get through a complicated diag without a without a scope. Does it does it help? Yeah, if that's how you if that's how you're You've learned to diet, well, of course, it's going to be easier for you that way. But for me, um, I'd like to, I don't see, I don't own a scope, which is probably, dude, we're already in July. What's June Book doing here? It's <laughs> 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 the June Book. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, I, I like, I need to get more acclimated at using a scope. But, yeah, 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 I like I like that little auto. Um, yeah, Kyle, Kyle's got a nice one, but but I right now, yeah. I, I I go a lot off of probably what Miguel goes off. You probably go a lot off of experience, huh, Miguel? Like like I don't know yeah. if, if that's the right word, but things we've seen in the past. You know, we've been around a while, and and but like old school. <laughs> yeah, kind of, but not old school. Like like just throwing parts. I mean, old school like. You know what symptoms? No, I, I have a set of dice. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> He's a uh, dice. It's I, the I, alternator. What's going to be today? <laughs> <laughs> Agnostic dice. That's funny. That's good. Or, or the uh, diagnostic dart um, board. That's there, another there's, one. There's definitely, I mean, other ways to do it. Um, it's not, it's just... I mean, the thing is, current doesn't lie. That's I guess that's the thing. I mean, um, basically, true. you know, say say a customer has a mechanical problem, you can prove it, you know, with the scope and with waveforms, and tell them like this is why I need to do a teardown. You know, this is why I can justify charging you a thousand dollars in labor to tear down to get to this, and show you, and then you know we'll put that towards obviously a repair to fix it. You know what I mean? That's true, man. Current doesn't lie. That's a good point. But I mean, so, scan data too will tell you a lot. Scan and, data. That's very true. Well, 
I don't think. I mean, I guess I never saw it that way. I always thought, uh, uh, you know, you need a scanner to diagnose, but all it does is basically just give you data, you know, and then you just collect the evidence and then you go from there. Well, yeah, that's 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 what when you use scan that. I mean, at every whatever the car is doing, you know, whatever RPM it's at, you know, whatever gear it's in, scan data. It's going to have what is tip, typical at that moment in time. So if you're used to seeing, you know, um, your injector uh, pressure, IPR or injector uh, ICP, mm -hmm. uh, wide open throttle around 3,500 PSI, and at wide open throttle you're at uh, 400. You know, 1,500 PSI. Well, four, yeah, yeah, 400 PSI probably would start, but... Yeah, it would just run really bad, but 1,500 pieces, whatever. You know, you know there's a problem in, in that area, you know, and and I know voltage can get you there, absolutely, because, I mean, it's got, I mean, that, that's that's what the waveforms are going to tell you. They're going to show you the same thing that some of the scan data the pins are going to tell you. That's why a lot of the pins can be read, in, in, and a lot of the scanners give you the option to read it, read it uh, in a waveform rather than just the number. The graph, the graph. Yeah, the graph, the graph. <laughs> Because I know I got the Autel uh, MX-808. I think you have the uh, um, Diagon 5, right? Diagon? Yeah, I have, yeah, I have the launch Diagon 5. And then you're renting you over here. You're this way on my screen, but you're this way June. on the stream. You're have a loner triton triton d10 yeah do you like that one oh, it's awesome i love that i um I, I like it too much man i like it so much it's probably going to cost you five thousand dollars but <laughs> but um it, it but that triton then, d10 does it has a two channel scope on it that's nice yeah nice See, in my in my opinion, the best scan tool made by Snap On, I think, was a Veris Edge. I've seen a lot of people with that one. But the Veris Edge is a really good tool to have some experience with, and the four channel scope's a pretty good scope, honestly. I think. I think uh, uh... The, the only thing, and this is a really minor thing, like ways around it, the scope's banana plug. It's not BNC. But that's kind of a minor thing. You can get an adapter or something. Yeah, you could make adapters for that. I mean, I guess you could see it as, I mean, let's say, say you buy what, let's just say Zeus, you know, with the four channel. Was it, they have four channel scope on the Zeus? Yeah. Um, and that's what, maybe, you know, around eight, eight, Eight grand and up, depending on what kind of deal you can score. And yeah. then, oh, a Pico scope costs you what? You know, 2800 with the laptop or whatever. Oh, for the then, kit? Yeah. You know, you get that, and then you can go buy yourself, you know, $800 scanner. That, to that, get you data. That, that and is that's, a great point, dude. That, that, you can't, yeah, that's a good point right there. That's, that's a really good way to look at it. So, so we all want to <laughs> launch you a he's, he, he, he tries to send me work all the time. He's, try, he's always trying to send me diesel work. He's like, hey, man, I got this guy. I know this guy. So said, he's not far from me. He's maybe 80 miles from me. He's pretty close from, to me. He's from Burbank. Burbank. From yeah. Burbank. So, so, Miguel, what scan tool do you have? Launch uh, X431. The other yeah, four, right? The same one as this one, but the four. We, uh, hit, five. Hit, it's a bigger tablet, five. though. Oh, yeah, the five. This is the five. Uh, I don't have well, But that one, but, but yours is from the, the USA uh, line. Mine is uh, is the other it's, one. It says made in China. <laughs> yeah, but there's two. So, so, there's um, uh, oh, like, oh, like, oh, like two branches. Yeah, 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 yeah
Yeah, see, his is a bigger screen. Oh, you got like the laptop version. See, no, but the so thing about tablet. like, yeah, like I mean, sorry, yeah, tablet version. So yeah, actually, the, tab- the tablet the tablet probably like 100 bucks. the same as the one that launch makes for Mac, I believe. Well, oh, he's got the old... big one. Is this a dongle? Yeah, I dongle? think so. Yeah, I think it's huge. So- so you can uh how do you road that, test with that thing? You're kicking it out all the time. Huh? How do you road test with that thing? You're kicking it out all the time. Half the time uh, and they have this thing. Oh low. Oh he's got go between. Doesn't fit in the... Oh okay. Yeah. So that, that, that could adapt and make give you room. That actually happened to me. It's Bluetooth and it's not bad, but I I have it under the core. I can't remember what vehicle it was, yeah. but to I would try to go press the gas pedal and I would hit the freaking uh, oh, the the port, I was like, crap. Yeah, and I would hit it. I'm like, what the heck? So I had to like, be all careful so I wouldn't freaking knock see, it down. See, the, yeah. my scan tool is they also make them Bluetooth for not much more money. My thing is, I know I'm going to forget the freaking uh, dongle in some car. <laughs> but, see, yeah, well, actually, on this, on the. Cord. So. Yeah, on, on this uh, launch, when you were like going back all the way and you know, uh, finish the diagnosis, it gives you a, a small you. alert. Yeah, yeah. It beeps at you. Go I don't forget. Go. Yeah. What I don't. And a small that's message. Good. That's good. That's what I don't good. like about the launch is when I try to connect to a vehicle, and it doesn't matter what vehicle, it oh, asks sure. me t- 21 questions. You know, like it won't connect on its own. No, like you know, say you hook up a Snap on, it's gonna go. You know, you hook up to a six seven, right? And, you know, automatically search is gonna get the vehicle for you. Boom. I put this one on it as is it four by four. Yes. Is oh, it, yeah. Does it have satellite radio? I don't yeah, know. It's like you know, yeah, like you know. Does you it have traction that? control? <laughs> yeah, it asks me all these so, questions like, bro, just connect. <laughs> Well, what yeah. auto I this one does pen. when when it's a a a Chevy, that Chevy? It, that's where it gives oh. more questions. Yeah. Once all the hey, RPO. What codes. kind of radio? What kind of radio do you have? Oh, jeez. What kind Ooh. of AC unit do you have? Is dual, yeah. single, do you like hip, manual? Hip hop or country music? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got heated seats. I don't know, bro. <laughs> yeah. Suspicion, like that's the only thing I hate. CR, like, whatever. You smoke in the car. <laughs> <laughs> See, my odd held somewhere between the snap on and that launch. Like when you plug the snap on, it boom, it knows everything, right? This thing will pull the bin, but if it's uh, manufacturer specific bin information, it's like you know, it asks me, you know, what's the market meaning what plant was the car built at and stuff like that, so. Uh, don't even and get me started with Mazda. You can select generic. Oh, but, God, they're the worst. What, what I like about this thing, though, is I can select general, and it'll give me all the information, even if it's not applicable to this vehicle. So if I'm not sure, I can just bypass it. Versus yeah. having to answer a whole bunch of questions I don't know. Yeah, like, what I still like about Snapping, like, it's not going to ask you about that until you go into, like, that specific module, you know? You say it's rear-wheel drive, mm-hmm. whatever, and then you go to the transfer case or something, and it asks you for, I don't know, is it automatic or manual? You know what I mean? But that's the only thing I don't like. The, it is pretty fast, though. I'll give it that. But, I don't know, I still feel like I haven't been able to use its full potential, like, with Kia mobilizing or... It did not want to program a uh, a computer for an Acadia, though. I let my friend mm-hmm. borrow it, and he tried to program a, a PCM, and it wouldn't do it. But um, so, so, do you guys have a whole bunch of adapters and stuff for the launch scan tool? Yeah. See, that's all has available ones, but most of them are the software is built in. The only thing I'm really need an adapter for. Didn't you? The two of you guys got your scans like in the same day or the same week, huh? Yeah, same week. Yeah. Yours isn't bi directional, is it? Or is it? Uh, Not really, but kind of is. Like, I can 
function check things like sweep the gauges and stuff like that, but it's not bidirectional like, where I can command a fuel pump on. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. See, that's what's kind of weird. This is bidirectional, but using the bidirectional, it's kind of weird. You know, like how on a snap on, you know, if you, you press on and press, press yes or no or disable yes or yeah. no, you know, and you can do it and you feel it. On this one, it's just like activate, deactivate. And sometimes it's like, well, did you do it or did you not do it? <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of weird. I'm like, how do I like, I don't know. It just says status yeah. active. Like, what? Yeah, like, that, that's so what I hear is in... Because I was trying to do a purge solenoid, and it said open, but it didn't say activated. So I'm like, great, you potentially opened it, but the data pid for the circuits that you didn't do anything. Yeah, so it's, it's it's very confusing. Like, I don't know, like, you know, I can turn a fan on or something, but, just, but like, sometimes, like, say, like, you know, uh, I've tried, I think I was doing a ABS module, I was trying to command it to bleed, and like I would do it, and then it wouldn't, like I wouldn't hear the car do anything or anything like that, and I'm just like, and like I'm pressing active and active, I don't know what I do, and then it, and then it finally does, it goes, and I'm just like. That's so. one thing I really like about this one, It's it's got a hot function for ABS bleeds, it's right there, I just tap and it does it. Well this one has it to too. Let's see, Let's see if we go to. Hey, anybody have any experience with those like blue drivers that you download the app to your phone? I have one oh, that plugs into my laptop. You that that actually, you have? I mean, for like, it's hard to explain, but for more basic stuff like monitoring fuel trims and stuff. That one's, I'm not going to say better, but it works really well, whereas this thing can be a bit picky. It, it's you know, somewhere. I just had it earlier. You know what's actually pretty cool about the launch is that uh, they have, like, I don't know what it's called. It's like, so basically, I'll just say, there's a guy that I talked to about the launch because he's, he's pretty good with it and I always see him. And he lives in New York, all right? And I live here in Texas, San Antonio, Texas. And he, I was on a vehicle, and he took control over this cancel, and he was doing everything for me because I was like, hey, where's this at? I can't find it. And he's like, oh, it's right here. He's like, let me show you. He's like, give me access to your, yeah, to control it, and I do it. Yeah. This and one like does he, that too. Does and it? it, it, it how do you give him access? What do you have to do? So there's like on a, mine, I just go to um, it's called Remote Desk. So I can basically control this thing from my laptop if I want to. Uh, and yours, Davian? Yeah, what's yours? You have the same one as Miguel. How do you do yours? Mine, mine's called Quick Support, and basically it's a, uh, it'll send it. Like we both go onto it, we both have to go to the website, or whatever, and like it'll give and us, like, it'll give me code. a, link. yeah, there's an access code, and we'll type it in, and then he'll get, and then the 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 Android itself will give me, a, I'll say, permission for, um, device, blah blah blah, to access, and then you give it, you know, you tell it yes. So and then the fun, the funny thing is, can you download third-party apps onto your launch scan tool? I don't know. I haven't tried. I'm I'm pretty sure if I go to like go because I mean it's necessary. It's basically just a tablet. I mean yeah. I'm pretty sure I can download because I mean I can get on yeah. the internet. Y'all can't see that, but see, see if you could like download yeah, remote have desk, the you could control my Autel scan tool from your launch scan tool. Like, dude, I could give you control of this thing right now. Oh, that's cool. <clears throat> so I thought that was pretty cool. So like, you, in a. You, but I See. think when the, they're doing like remote uh, access, let's say if I have the better launch scanner myself and I do a remote on yours, yeah. all my features they just pass uh, yeah. to yours. That's like I'm, I'm, I have my scanner with you. Oh, so even if you're, yeah, yeah. 
So even wow. if, if he doesn't have like access of so to some features, mine does, and I can do it remotely. You guys yeah, have the same so. camera, you just has the tablet version. I think so. I, I think it's a, the yeah. tablet it's the has a little bit. I think. Yeah, but I think the tablet came with like a little more features and stuff like that. Maybe even a couple more uh, uh, reset functions versus the one I have. See, what I like about this is I have a service function that gives me everything I can need really quick, like oil reset, parking brake, TPMS. Yeah, this one has it. Lead. The one I don't like is when I do throttle relearns, basically like when I usually clean a throttle body on a, on a tune-up, whatever. I'll go to it, and sometimes I notice on Dodge. If I go to Dodge and I go to just the quick, because it has that quick uh, special functions reset, yeah, it has it throttle like relearn. You can use that. I'll put it. I'll put it, and then like it won't do it. So I have to manually go through the module, go to throttle button, and relearn it versus that quick one. So it works sometimes, not all the time. Yeah, not a great scanner, not a bad scanner. It's. It's good. I, I don't know. I, 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 I want to get the just, auto. Uh, yeah. So maybe like having more uh, experience. I think they used to do like classes where you can take like classes to learn how to work on it, how to use the all the features. But yeah. that was like way back. Yeah. I don't know if they're gonna start doing it again or not. Well, I, mean, I know I feel Snap like, I mean, On was really good for that. Yeah, Snap On, they always have like their, they post it on, even on their Instagram, so like, you know, new course. It's for a how free to webinar. This and I've joined, and they, they're actually really good webinars, honestly. I think you can learn anything from any webinar, whether you're gonna, it's gonna be something you, like, I took uh, today, because I signed up for like four courses from Worldpack. They're all free, you know, and all good courses, you know. And oh, really? I, I took one on the, the European um, hybrid transmissions and stuff. Oh, I, I honestly like might, I might never ever work on one, but I learned a lot. I was like, wow. That's actually that. really cool. I didn't know that. Where, where do you sign up to work back to, to find that? Um, so I saw someone post it on Facebook, and so I clicked on his link, and it took me to Worldpack. And there on Worldpack, it had all these courses that were available. There was like five, six courses. And, I'll, I'll walk uh, up. I, I signed up for uh, four. I posted on the TTS story page, and I posted on my story page, like, hey, Worldpack has, I think only, like, two people asked me for the link, and I sent it to them. But, I mean, it was free, and then, like, I, I posted that I was taking it, and then a bunch of people, like, where was this at? I was like, bro, I just posted on my story. You saw it. You Believe know, it or not, uh, Dorman actually offers training courses, too. Who? Dorman. Dorman? Yeah. Hmm. That's a little... Like, like, yeah, like now I'm trying to, I want to take as many classes as uh, I can. Even if it's something I, I probably won't see for a few, but I mean, you you learn something. Even if it's something you already know, like if I take a, a steering class or something, you know, a brake class or oil change class, you know, I might learn something about some oil. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Paul Danner Paul Paul has some really good courses. Is, it, is he, that's a scanner Danner? Yeah, Paul Danner. He had some really good courses. Oh yeah, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on the Scanner Danner Premium. I need to buy his book because I feel like I have the the Scanner Danner Premium, and I like go through his notes. But I feel like it's just like highlights of what that chapter. So you actually need the book to kind of follow along with what's on his Scanner Danner Premium. He just gives like highlights. He's like, you remember this part from chapter one, and I'm like, no, I don't because I don't have the book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. Nice. But I, I need to buy it. You, you can never learn too much, and it was smart to take an EV class because EV, I mean, as much as we don't want it to be, it, it is going to be part of our futures, you know, working in, in, as mechanics. Um, so they're taking that EV transmission class. And that, that, dude, we're at my shop right now, we are shipping, uh, I forget what it was. Uh, it might have been a Toyota. But we're, we're shipping a vehicle. We did a, a water pump on it, but it, it needed a, a T-set housing, and then it had a transmission issue. And the, the – see, I'm not in the shop anymore. I probably would have done the T-set myself, but then again, I don't know. I might not have. But the, to take the T-set housing out, it's right over the connector to the 
the, like one of the major connectors for the EV part of the, of the vehicle. And it has mm. that red tag on it. So, you know, the high like, voltage. Oh, yeah, the high voltage part. And I'm mm. like, man, <clears throat> do I really want to pull that? You know, because don't you need like two kinds of gloves and, and ground yeah. strap and all kinds of stuff to, to mess with those high voltage batteries? Like yeah, you just, I think you just gotta disconnect the. I mean, you disconnect the battery like you would any car, and then you so, go and take off the safety lock, and then you padlock it. You know, so no one can actually put it in. A disconnect that just kills the high voltage system. And then you're able to move it, disconnect it, whatever you need to do to access to it. So, yeah, so, that's the only information the guy gave me. Maybe what he was saying was he was just worried that if, even if they did all that. When he took off the T-set housing, he didn't want to get water or coolant on there. But either way, uh, the transmission issue was the main reason that we were shipping it. It was a Honda. I take it back because when I called I called the shop to see if we could sub that, and they said that they didn't work on Hondas, Honda, Honda electric vehicles. But uh, yeah, we're shipping the car because we don't have anyone that can work on an EV transmission. So yeah, EV, we're only in 2021, and it's already, they're already in our shops. What well, was that, like an Insight or... No, I think it was a Civic. Oh, the hybrids. They have hybrid Civics and hybrid Fits, I think. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't a Fit. I would have recognized it as a different name, so I'm pretty sure it was a Civic. Well, so, uh, so in that going, course, I... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Going back to what Fabian said about padlocks. This is a lockout, tagout lock. Anyway, Ford, for their hybrid escapes, I was looking through a service manual for that. They say... And don't, I can't remember the way they exactly worded it, but they said pull the uh, safety switch out, and then they recommended putting an Allen wrench through there to, air quote, prevent tampering. Just stick an Allen wrench through there. Like, okay, that's great, but it's not really like, secure. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> but it's basically the like, so better if... part is on the switch, there's a picture of a padlock with the arrow pointing to the hole. Like, put one in here. Nah, nah, dis disregard that. Allen wrench is fine. <clears throat> it's just so that no one can go and accidentally plug it back in, you know, yeah. I mean, or unhook it and, you know. Um, but in that course, I had learned about they have electromagnetic converters. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, like, like some, of the, some of these BMWs, they have, they don't have torque converters. They have an electromagnetic converter. And then they have like a, an actual extra clutch and stuff the way it gauges. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know? That is um, pretty cool. And like, oh, the, the transmissions themselves, like, like they're like hybrid transmissions. Like, you know what I mean? They're part manual, part, you know, electric. So, and, you know, they have a cooling system as well. They have to have coolant running in, you know, cooling down the electromagnetic converter and stuff like that. So, um, and that's one of the reasons I kind of want to like uh, leave my shop. I don't know. I, I kind of want to go to like a European dealership and uh, just to get more knowledgeable on these electric vehicles and hybrids and stuff. You know, I don't want to get left in the dust. So, what are you thinking, Audi, yeah. BMW, something like that? Either, yeah. I'm either. I'm really thinking like BMW, Mercedes, or even uh, Volvo. You know. Why, um, why don't you find a community college with the IMO <laughs> program sponsored by one of those companies? So I don't know if I want to go to school again. I already went to tech school, and I don't know if I want to pay for another thing in school and still be paying on my – I'm still paying on my tech school, you know? Mm. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind take. I don't mind paying for courses and hands-on training. Like, that's different, but I don't know about full-on – Paying for you know another fifteen twenty grand for school. No, I got that. I don't I understand oh, that. They kind of did you go to tech school or did you get your your background? In, I know your dad's a mechanic, but is that where you learned just from your dad? So I never actually went to like a UTI or WyoTech or anything. It's just the local community college. And we have a really good IMO program that's sponsored oh, by Toyota, Subaru, really and colleges. Ford, I want to say. Yeah, Ford, Ford does Ford does a sponsorship at, at, through community. Yeah, because 
Actually, yeah, because I did the um, asset program. Yeah. Or so, like and maybe I, Ford. I might go to Ford, just because they're actually trying to move into you know electric vehicles and stuff. And so I work on Toyota. a lot of Fords. Got the Mustang. You ever seen that? The yeah, the, the Mach, the Mach one, the Mach E, the Mach, the Mach E. e yeah. Then they're gonna have a full electric pickup. The Lightning, the new F one fifty Lightning. F one fifty, oh yeah. The Hummer. Mm -hmm. I like. I don't know. I liked that new Hummer they came out with. The all electric Hummer. I thought the thing was pretty sweet. The EV Hummer. Yeah. Do you remember so, anything electric, Miguel? Nah, no, I haven't. Well, now, when people know how much how much the battery <laughs> costs, they're like, oh no, no. yeah, no. <laughs> they, mean, they they hardly pay for the hundred and fifty. <laughs> fifty battery, let alone a five thousand dollar battery. And hey, what do you guys do an hour when you're working out when you're working out for yourself? It depends. Kind of it depends on the job, really. Yeah, usually um, usually it's like 85, 100 an hour. Um, but like certain jobs, I, I'll put them like, I mean, like a break job. I'm not going to charge you 100 bucks an hour for no. a two-hour. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll just do like a flat rate, like maybe 60, 70 bucks, depending if you're doing a rotary surface, if there's wheel bearing packs involved. You know, do I got to pull off an axle to do your brakes? You know, if it's like a dually or something. Honda, Honda and the one piece hubs. <clears throat> Ford, yeah, you know, like you got the ones, or not Ford, the Nissan x you got the ones where you got unbolt the hub bearing from the rotor and everything. Like, I'm going to charge No, did not, but work on Nissan x brakes. Got it. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think there's a Ford like that too. I can't remember which one. The fourth gen, uh, a Third or fourth gen Honda Accords are like that. You gotta pull a whole front hub to do the brakes. Yeah. What year is the fourth gen? Like the late nineties. Hmm. All right. So, so if like brakes, kind of, yeah, I would even do brakes. Kind of just you can't charge, you know, hundred bucks an hour for it. You gotta be competitive. With yeah. gravy, basically gravy work is like they get like a basically a set price. Like, yeah. pay a tune up, uh, ten dollars a plug. So if you got a V eight, eighty bucks. If I gotta take off an intake, I'll throw another twenty dollars on there or something. Yeah, Depending exactly. on if, if it gets a little more intensive, like I gotta do a lot more. Um, then yeah, you know, four cylinder, like I'm forty. But I'm not gonna charge you, you know, a hundred dollars for an hour. You know what I mean? To do four spark plugs. You know, yeah. I'll I'll sell you something else that needs done. Make my money off of that. You know, it's gravy. Do you, you know. Do you make money on parts, or you, do you give the customer the price you pay? Pretty much no, the price I, I pay. I I'll get like Not depending. I'll get like ten, ten to twenty percent off sometimes. But that's just the you know sometimes like hey uh, I'm doing you. A, I'm cutting down on some labor, so I'm gonna make some money off the parts. But the thing is. Doing like the side work, or if you're doing it like full time, you can't cut yourself out on labor at all. You know, oh, yeah. like that's where you, that's where you, and then you got to charge for parts. You know, so if I'm looking up everything for you, you know, and sometimes I don't charge diac fees. You know, like hey, I'll, usually half the time people just pay me like hey, I'll pay you for your time. All right, cool. You know, I don't, I'm not gonna, you know, I I don't feel like I'm at that level too. Hey, I'm gonna charge you sixty-five dollars, eighty dollars for a diet. You know what I mean? I'm not at that pristine level where I can, I can hundred percent confident. I don't care what problem you have, I'll figure it out. You know what I mean? I'm not there yet, but um, some parts, you know, like on one of the jobs today, I made sixty dollars off the parts because I got a twenty percent off. You know, for me, that's for me, so I can warranty out those parts for those customers. You know, I'm using, I'm driving to the parts yeah. stores, picking up the parts. You know, I'm doing. Time you look them up, call them, and get them ordered. Yeah, all yeah, get another call. You know, it's paying for my time. It's not like I'm trying to rip you off. Hey, you know, if you want to go buy the parts, go buy them. You want, you don't want, you know, you want to, you want to see it as, oh, I'm making sixty dollars off of you. Then you know, you go buy the parts. That's on you. You know what I mean? You take your time out of your day, and go get them. If you bring them to me and they're wrong, I'm gonna charge you more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we can we can probably much... can take you from one hour to you know, three hours, depending on how busy the store is. So if they have the part, they don't have the part in stock. It's a big old yeah. hassle getting parts nowadays. All right, you, that's a different story, man. You got to be charging some gas because I, I live, you know, like a mile away from O'Reilly. So just, and I go there all the time. So they hook me up. They come yeah, to I, have, shop. I have my, my auto parts. I have three. I have Napa, AutoZone, O'Reilly. And now the new ones uh, advance from like what? Like six blocks away. I don't so like it. It's a small town. They don't have other. Oh, no, they 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 change a lot since they got CarQuest. Yeah, I was they gonna say. Yeah, I've, I've got a, I've got a commercial with Riley's, and I've got bottles of as well, but I don't really use them. But and I've I don't have a commercial account at Ford, but because I used to work at Ford, I get like the same price that a, that a, a busy shop would get. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, so I'll but. I'll tell the customer what the what parts they need, so they can call when I tell them how much they cost. I say this is everything you need, and they can call any Ford dealership in the country, and that's the price they're going to get because it's the price that I'm charging them. You know, they don't need to know what I'm paying for them. Yeah, <laughs> but certain certain times, you know, if I really if it's like a, a big labor ticket, you know, I'll I'll tell them I say, you know what I'll split the difference with you. you know you know if I'm saving. A third, just say I'm saving 200 bucks on all his parts. You know, I'll make 100 and save him 100 to put the difference and make him feel better. Yeah, make him feel better. You know, you're saving 100 bucks on parts, man. You know, it, it could, because I, I, I go somewhere at four. He doesn't need to know that that he's actually that I will save 200, but at least he knows right. he, he can call everybody and say, Oh, I am saving 100 bucks. That's awesome. I, I do that sometimes to help me sell a job. Like, uh, I got a bunch of friends and dealerships. And a lot of them can get me, you know, OEM parts at their price. Yeah, and I, and at that point, like, I don't make money off that part. Um, you know, say I had a friend uh, at a, a job. A 2018, they needed an alternator. You know, they went to the dealership. You know, it was going to cost them over $1,000 for parts oh. and labor. And uh, my friend asked me, you know, how much could I do it for? I was like, well, I'm going to put an original alternator on there. I'm not. It's too new of a car. I'm not going to put an aftermarket one. So I called my friend and I ended up giving her a call. It was like four fifty, you know. And uh, my friend was getting the alternator for like two hundred. And I was like, "Well, how much profit do you want?" He was like, "You tell her, t tell her two fifty. I was like, "All right, cool." I was like, "Hey, I can do the alternator, you know, two fifty, blah blah blah." You know, and my friend made you know money off the part, not me, you know. But it was like, "Hey, you helped me sell that job," like, you know. So. Yeah, that's cool, man. That, that works out. I, mean, I just had a uh, kind of talked to Kyle about this for a while. I kept getting put on the back burner, but it was uh, uh, the Saturn View or Saturn, Saturn something. Uh, Lisa makes the view Saturn something. Uh, I was doing the water pump, water pump on it. That and, special tool. Yeah, and I, it kept getting put on the back burner. Not by me, but by, by the, the, the customer. And uh, I know he finally, I thought he was going to go to the dealer because a couple of times I did tell him I couldn't when he had time because he had blown me off a couple of times. I said, yeah, I can't do it like this weekend or I can't do it period for, for a couple of weeks or whatever. But he was about to go to the dealer. And I think my quote to him was parts, labor, tax, like 350 bucks. And the dealer was going to charge him like eleven $1 hundred dollars, so he waited for me. <laughs> He's like, "I'll wait." <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, and I get that a lot too. And sometimes it's, it's it's uh it's hard. Like sometimes I get overwhelmed. Like today, you know, I was tired. I wasn't a little overwhelmed, but you know, this weekend I checked a total of three cars. You know, I fixed a car. You know, and and like sometimes I'm like sometimes I I forget and I'll schedule like five, six people in one day forgetting I scheduled that many people. And I'm like, crap. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't want to like cancel on them. Cause it's like, if I cancel on you now, now I'm pushing you back another week. And then I might lose out on your business. Like, you know, the money's there. I can't, I can't deny it. You know what I mean? So, but, uh, yeah. I'm actually going to go guys. Cause it's getting late. I'm tired. A little amount of sleep. I want to be right. fresh for the week. No, I feel you, man. I saw oh, you. Yeah. It's, it's what? It's after midnight for you, isn't it? Or almost midnight? 
No, nah, it's 11.35 Almost. right now. Yeah, it's getting late for you guys. No, that's cool, man. We did an hour, man. That was a good talk. I'll, I'll put it up. And like I said, I'm not, I don't know when I'm going to put it up. I mean, I know. What that's fine. Is, is use it to fill gaps, you know? <laughs> like oh, like yeah. when a couple people haven't sent me a video or something, I'm going to I'll throw this up. I mean, Gia, yeah, if I'll, you want to hang out, I'm down to hang out for a little bit. Oh, um, yeah, it's early. If I can stay out for a little bit more. Yeah. But uh, hey, um, Daniel, man, say, say, say an outro, man. From what's your channel, dude? I well, I actually need to get back on them, man. I just I've been super busy with work. I haven't put out anything. I haven't been able to watch videos. It's like I've been wanting to watch like all these videos, and I just I don't know. I just been going through the motion, haven't been on my channel. And I mean, I've gotten a bunch of tools. I need to be posting videos. Like I mean, if I go to my videos, I still record videos footage for content. You know, if I go to my video library, you know, I have like 200 videos of stuff I gotta edit and post, but it's just. <clears throat> oh, wow, man, time that's, doing that's, it that's crazy but yeah but alright guys I'll see y'all later y'all stay right, safe have, all a right, good have a good one uh, well, so now it, now it looks like a Thursday night stream <laughs> yeah like an old school Thursday night stream yeah um, um, that, go live. that was the first time I got to do anything uh, with Davia and it's actually really cool to uh, I mean, we've talked and everything like that. But this is the first time we've done a, a panel discussion or, or what do you call podcast type talk. So that can be unplugged, cool. whoever. Yeah, text unplugged, whatever we, we decide to call it. What are you carrying? Do we got a new tool? Got, what, what's that? A compression tester or something? Uh, like, that's for my scanner. That's your Apache yeah, that's kit. That's for my scanner. Oh. Yeah. 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 That's what I like about the Odd Health Scanner. It comes with its own case. Yeah, yours is small. The one that comes with uh, mine is like three sizes bigger than this. Yeah, I know. Uh, eventually, I'll probably have to get case. one of those by the time I get all the accessories and different stuff. So. Yeah. <clears throat> What's that one, the gear range? Yeah, the 120 XP. Yeah, you have to set. I mean, yeah, ten to nineteen. Because I know the mountain ones. I don't dislike them, but the shop has them, and I have broken every single one of them. The going breaks, right? The mountain, yeah, because they're all ratcheting. This thing's got a fixed box. I can break it loose with and ratchet it out. <laughs> Yeah. So. Yeah, I like that set. I remember. Yeah. I remember uh, back in the day, gear wrench. Uh, when they started coming out, people complain about the same thing. They they would break easily. They break easily, and they yeah. get rid of the box. It used to say it wasn't meant to to you know break loose any any bolts. It was just to uh, a faster way to pull uh, get them out like bolts nuts, but not to break loose any. Bolts, See, like that. And, and the problem there is it left a bad taste in those people's <clears throat> mouths and they never went back to gear wrench. Because, no. Chu, don't you have the mountain set? Heck no. I got the OG original Easy Red. Oh, right. I no, nothing, wrong, nothing wrong with mountain. Probably the same thing. I'm stacked. Mine are easy. Yeah. Red. So these, in my opinion, are like the best of both worlds because you get the offset, you get the ratcheting flex, and these are the spline, spline drive because Gear Wrench yeah. makes like a fixed box ratcheting, and then this end, it's 12 point. Those are kind of useless to me. So. No. You like spline drive? This is the first real set of spline drive I've had. I've had like single spline drive sockets and stuff, but yeah, they work pretty good. At first, you feel like you're gonna round stuff off. Yeah, but it bites really well and will take out partially rounded stuff. I, I know I've shown these before, but the little like these things from O'Reilly's. They're like the Astro Nano sockets, but quarter inch drive. 
Yeah. You put him in the eleven millimeter. It. So I kind of like that huh? setup. Yeah, it, it works well. That, that is a nice set. That's like thirteen bucks for those sockets. It's amazing how, no matter how many tools we have, there's I mean, always that one more. more. We there's still one more. <laughs> we we all doesn't matter where we are, man. We we walking through O'Reilly's or or Home Depot or whatever. It's like, oh, I gotta go see the tools. I gotta go see the tools. Yeah. yeah. So what are you working on right now, Kyle? Besides that house, that house done? Uh, no, I got paint and then drywall inside, and I should be about done. I got at some Whose point. Whose house are you doing? Huh? Whose house is it? Just it's a, a neighbor. It's no, it's a neighbor's house. Well, his friend. Yeah, did you know house. how to do? Construction and contract people, or are you learning as you do it now? No, no, I that's why I more did that before I'm off and I'm off just took over. You said say that again, you what? I, I did a lot of that stuff more before I'm off and then automotive and that just took over. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, but I got a water pump on a Durango coming up, so I picked this up. Open it up. What is it? Water the, pump on a what? The, uh... Fan clutch. Fan clutch tool. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 just you, just be a, uh, hmm? you just You just picked that up recently? Yeah. You were just banging them off before? Pretty much. I'm like, you know, they make a tool for us. I'm like, there's one on eBay for like 25 bucks. So I picked it up. For the longest time, I used to use a uh, uh, crescent range. Yeah. And a yeah. big old four pound hammer. <laughs> yep. That works too. Yeah, whatever it yeah. takes. I mean, I've got the tool that Kyle just showed. I mean, I, I've had it for. Yeah, a long time. I don't know, but before that, I had basically a wrench that was made out of the same. Uh, Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. Say hello. Hello. Hola. Hola. Hey, hey, Angelito, how are you? <laughs> Still going. Yeah. What do you want to work tomorrow? Uh, you. Yeah, I'm working. Yeah, I kind of want to get the house repairs stuff done and get back to automotive. All right. These are kind of new too, the tap sockets. So, and I can never show any of my tools anymore because I'm always in my dining room. I'm not in my garage when I'm on live streams. What kind of one is that? I don't know. I I showed you this deal before. It's a three eight impact socket from OEM. Uh -huh. and from uh. uh from A to 19 and 5 16 to 3 quarter, uh, deep and shallow, and you get these four uh, ratchets free for 89. That's not bad. Oh, that's not a bad deal at all. I mean, impact, impact I, I'm not sure. I've got an OEM quarter inch ratchet. I really, it's kind of small. I really don't need much, but I don't know what their other ratchets yeah, are. Like. You, you get a stubby uh, Duralast, you get a regular standard uh, soft handle, and then you get two of those um, one quarter body 
with a 3H, uh, 3H drive and a 3H drive with a shallow head hmm. or narrow head, how do you call that one? Oh, 89 cool, bucks, 90 bucks, yeah, 90 bucks. These aren't new by any means, but they're pretty cool. Uh, I like those things. Go no goes. So, oh. like, they're two thicknesses. They're like 15, 17. First step, 15, step, second step, 17. You find your tolerance. If it's between the two, it's good. You don't have to. Pull out two gauges. Nice. Yeah, or or you can just go to the proper gauge, and if it goes through, it's no good. If it doesn't, it is. <laughs> if you can go to the proper thickness, you know the right. Yeah, but if it gives you a window, I mean. Yeah. These are pretty cool sure. too. Los Angeles? Did that say Los Angeles on it? Yeah. Cool. So, speaking of American made tool companies, let's talk about. Oh, uh, we, we should have asked uh, Davey before we left if he had any thoughts on that. What's yeah. your thoughts on that? I, I hope they don't change a thing man but you know it's gonna happen even if they stay being get manufactured in the united states I, all the profits are gonna go to the chinese china now you know it's, it's yeah it's a, i don't know i i, I i'm worried it's gonna change the end product hey but you know what i, I watched the jdt Cole's video on it the other day and if you really think about it he's right we were all i just yeah just might have just watched it today. Everybody likes to say, oh, yeah, I love SKO. I love SKO. We probably all do. Or we all did. Or we all do, whatever. But he's right, man. SK is, they're not very innovative. In, how do you start? In, in, they don't, innovative, is that a word? Yeah. They don't really yeah. make the, a the, record-breaking or super new idea tool. Yeah, it, it, everything for them is nostalgia. You know, it's like, oh, you know what, my... I used to use these these tools with my dad, or my grandpa had a set of these in, in his garage. Or this was the first set of tools I got out of the tech school. They were made in the USA and, and they were affordable. But what are they doing? That's like, oh my goodness, I, 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 I can't live without SK. You know, they're 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 eons ahead of everyone else when it comes to, to the new tools they're coming out with. I'd be more. I think the way after watching his video, I'd be more upset. If Lyle Tools got bought by a Chinese company, than I am True. that SK that SK got that got bought by the Chinese company because Lyle Tools is very innovative. They, they're constantly. I think CP said they make twelve new tools a year on top of everything that they they already make. They pay yeah. engineers to develop at least once a month. Come out with a new tool. So I, I would be, I would be more. I just bought a Lyle tool. It just came. I just got it. Uh, don't don't hate on me, but I just got it from Amazon. It got delivered yesterday, but it's an adapter for for a, a compression for a, for a compression test kit. You know, for the 04 to 08 uh, Triton motors. Oh I yeah, I, I know which adapter you're talking. About. Yeah, you know, I was like, oh, I came across it. I was like, man, I can't find it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Someone asked me, they're like, I can't believe you don't have that. I said, dude, if it was a spark plug, if it was a glow plug adapter, I'd have it. <laughs> it's for a, it's for a spark plug, man, to check compression. <laughs> I mean, going back to what you're saying about SK, they don't even make a comfort grip. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Look at even their hard handle. Don't get don't get me wrong, I don't like comfort grips, but there's a ton of people that do like comfort grips, you know. And and they don't they don't offer a comfort grip. They have that stupid. I don't know if it's stupid. I've never used it to be honest with you. But the, like that uh, wire twisting tool and the X frame wrenches, which what he said, I 100% agree on. Excellent. Those are cool enough. But why why did they make them six point? You know what what made them better being a six being six point on on the box end? 
than the open end. But yeah, yeah, dude, like I said, man, at this point, I would be more upset if Lyle came out tomorrow and said we're getting bought by a Chinese hole than I was. Now I was, I'm not, I don't want to say devastated, but I was pretty beat up that SK was was switching or, or getting being bought by it by a by a Chinese company. But after watching Nick's video, I thought about it and I said, you know what, I'm okay with it. Good riddance, whatever, you know. But man, I would be more more upset now if, if Lyle or who's another good American like manufacturer that that still like I don't think Snap will ever go get bought by a Chinese company, but I don't think SK was really on Snap on level. That's my take on that. What's your take on that, Miguel? Do you have a lot of SK tools? No, I don't have any SK tools. <laughs> no. No, no. Hey, uh, I miss a bunch of the de uh, the steels and deals. What about OTC? Yeah. OTC? Well, they make a lot of specialty stuff. For Jude's example, OTC is oh, yeah. an American company that's kind of like Lyle. If they got bought out. Yeah, that would be more upset. Now, after watching Nick's video, I would be more upset if OTC or if Lyle bought by a Chinese company. Before watching this video, I was like everybody else. You know, I was ready to film a, a an SK video about my thoughts. But I was like, ah, you know, it got played out. I should have done it right when I heard it. But I didn't. Somewhere in here. But now, that, now that I just made that statement, I think maybe I should because I think that was a pretty good statement. I might do a short on it. Yeah, it's somewhere in here. Well, I'm gonna go get it. And have it. That's, seed, that's one thing that's not in my yeah, car. The see I have is uh, now, now you tell me, you as soon as you grab it, I'm gonna find it. You know that. Maybe it's not even in here. This is kind of old catalog. Um, part number is two zero three eight zero. It's an M sixteen by one point five threaded. I can open it up. This is the package. This is the tool. I can open that up. I wonder if SK is going to do what Craftsman did, go overseas and then come back. Craftsman hasn't come back yet. They're going to, though. Oh, I know they are, but I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt until they're here. I think, honestly, Proto is starting to fall back. And their market penetration, I think. Honestly, I think they're pricing themselves out of the market. There's plenty of companies that make come out with a tool, you know, here and there, that's cool, you know, they come up with their own thing, you know, Oscar came out with the nano sockets. I don't even know, if, some people say Sinex beat them to it, I don't know if that's true or not, but the Astro was just when it got marketed better. Um, like all these extraction matches, I know Astro actually had a pair of those way before, like the pre and gear wrench and a lot of these companies did. Well, like, a good example for Astro is uh, big nasty, the um, 457 shank air hammer, mm -hmm. or whatever the next size up from 401 shank is. Is that the real name for it? I thought that's just what Eric Hall called it. No, it literally says it's only in quotes, you know, like it's stuck, like people can't yeah. remember point number, but they remember that. Okay. I know Thor is that impact, <laughs> yeah. 
Do you own, own any Astro tools, Miguel? Tools, Miguel? Yeah, I use the nano sockets. They they're really handy. Oh yeah. They 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 are really handy. You know, they never sent me my expansion pack. Just message them again. No? Again, you think you think message them again? Yeah. I'll try. I mean, like. Mac is a great company, but they don't make a ton of their own stuff. Like, here's a SP7231R. Don't mind whatever this adapter stack is. You know, it's the flex head cutoff tool. Mac sells the same tool. That's pretty cool. Made by SP, so... I mean, well, a lot of companies do that, but you know what? What I don't, what started to get to me is I should have known better, but you know, Cornwell, Mac, Snap On are tool companies, tool trucks that went to dealerships all the time or went to, to auto shops that you expected to be American made tools. Um, I just bought a pair of or a set. I think it's a five piece set, might be a four piece set. But uh like the, the little clip tools, you know, to, to get the trim trim clips. Clip poppers. Clip poppers. And it's nice it's a nice set. It's probably gonna work for a long time. And and I asked the dude how much and he's like, Oh, sixty five bucks, I'm all sold. And I went to go pay for it, and then in my head I'm thinking, wait a second. This is the Cornwall truck. And he just sold me a five piece set for 65 bucks. I said, there's no way in hell this thing's gonna be made in the USA. And I checked, of course, it's made in Taiwan. And does it mean it's not gonna work as well? No, but it's just a little bit upsetting, man. I mean, part of the reason I paid, because I could have got the same set on Amazon, probably from a lot of companies made in Taiwan for, for 35 bucks. Right. But I got it off the formal truck. I know their formal trucks comes to my shop every Wednesday. But I haven't seen a Cornwall guy around here about I don't know ever. I kind of like I, I like the nostalgia of being able to get USA made off the off of tool trucks. I can't find the freaking oh here it is. I'm like, I can't find the freaking catalog. It's right here. No, that's not it either. Hey, remember, we're going to want people, people to watch this, man. They, people don't want to just watch you reading the catalog. <laughs> no, I was looking for an example of that, but I think it's the next flyer, flyer eight. Mac has that flyer screwdriver promo. That's out right now. My godson just, just bought that. He got, uh, I don't know. A regular set of pliers. You got precision pliers. You got hose pliers. You got screwdrivers and like crescent wrenches on that. And the, and the crescent wrenches, yeah. And he paid like two hundred bucks for it. Yeah, it's it's and a really good deal. It's a phenomenal it's a deal. Thing. I promise you, it's not made in the USA. The screwdrivers are. That's it. Okay. Oh, now, I I thought about buying that deal purely because. This is Don't it. you have that piece? Did you buy that deal last year? Six six piece pliers set. Oh, <laughs> right. And I paid exactly what that deal cost for the four long pliers and all the other stuff. So Who's eating candy? Someone's opening candy wrappers. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Now, to be sneaky, <laughs> these aren't man you say. No, they're not bad to them, they're warranted, but no. I know it, it had been years since I bought anything off the Cornwall truck. Where I've never seen a Cornwall truck. Then, then the other thing here at all. Is something that I'm not a big fan of. I know you're. I, I talked about this on uh, on 
the live stream week that Miguel and that we do on uh, Thursday nights. But it uh, you used to be on there, Kyle. You don't come on anymore, but you used to be part of it. Um, oh, I might come on. But Miguel doesn't come on hardly anymore either. To be honest with you, <laughs> it's pretty much just Joey and I. But but uh, uh, we talked about this Thursday night. But I'll bring it up again for the people who didn't see it there. Mm -hmm. Cornwell, I mean, Mechanics Time Saver makes good uh, quality storage equipment, storage tools, or and mm -hmm. you know carts and stuff like that. But Mechanics Time Saver is not. Uh, you don't see mechanics time saver trucks coming to your shop, you know, but Cornwell who makes has toolboxes. You can get a Cornwell cart or a Cornwell box. My Cornwell dealer is selling a mechanics time saver cart that retails anywhere. I've looked at many places that I found it online for $1,500. Now I know he's paying for it and then, selling it on payments to us but you know they're uh, no interest payments but he's selling it for twenty four hundred dollars you know that's nine hundred dollars more than what we can get it for you know I, and i was talking to Tarek, and he was like yeah i could see maybe you know two to five hundred bucks at the most you know two to three probably being fair mm -hmm. but you know, nine hundred dollars because he's letting you make hundred dollar payments. That just seems outrageous, man. And I'm I don't think that's that's a, he, if he wants to charge that, he should have a Cornwall cart on the yeah. on his on his box. So yeah. I was talking to Sean. They're going to have a hmm? mechanics time saver, Sean. Yeah, they're going to have a MTS truck soon. So. I don't know what his coverage is going to be, or if it's just a demo truck. But there's definitely going to be a truck. What they should do is they should make an agreement with who is it that you have to sign a contract with to have an independent truck for like like Gear Wrench. Yeah, but make it. You know how Snap On has the. Shop Essentials truck, follow them sometimes, and, and they'll have the other truck that just has boxes and carts in it. Yeah. They should have a deal where a Mechanics Time Savers storage truck follows around like a gear wrench truck or a SK truck. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, uh, MTS makes great stuff. They're lock and stock at rails. No, I, I said I said that they make great stuff. I just said I don't think they make as of right now, you know, they may even make the Cornwall cart because the Cornwall cart looks really similar. But I've looked at their cart and I've looked at their new box. I don't think it's worth the money. Honestly. I don't think it's worth the money. There's not enough drawers. Speaking of new boxes, what do you think about the new Carver, Harbor Freight full drawer cart? US it General. looks decent. The seven drawer it looks decent, honestly. Yeah, I think I think the price is a little bit high. I think maybe six twenty five, six fifty would have been fair. That's probably what you know when you get there. Any any item coupon for twenty five percent is probably what it's going to come out to. So that's probably what they were. That's probably when they figure they're going to sell most of them. I mean, let's wait. By, by the end of the year, they do some big old deal for it. Yeah. Well, anyways, guys, we've been on for an hour and a half. Uh, I got I got a couple things I got to do. I got to try to film my own video for tonight for something for for my channel. I don't think I will. But it's already getting kind of late. But if you guys want to, well, first let me thank uh, Davion Martinez is the for being part of. He's part of TDS. Everybody check him out on Instagram. It's the Zinni and on YouTube, Davion Martinez. Or I might have said it backwards, but that. No, you're right. You're right. Okay. Yeah. 
And uh, great dude, a lot of good content. You, you guys will, will like his channel, anybody who watches it. Uh, Miguel Martinez does not have a YouTube, but he does have an Instagram. Miguel underscore Martinez underscore 21 underscore. Is that correct? Yeah, I think, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. And then, and then, and then he has a, a, a YouTube channel, uh, Angel DIY, with no content on it. So you won't give him any thumbs up, but at least you won't give him any thumbs down. <laughs> he doesn't have any content. Uh, I'll, I'll let, let Kyle go ahead and, and give his own channel and, and page. Uh, just put this into Instagram and YouTube, I think, except I don't think there's spaces on Instagram. I should know this. Nope. Keep belt it, except no spaces on Instagram. And the uh, YouTube, it's exactly as it is here. So. Yeah, check out Kyle's channel. He's got a lot of cool stuff on there. One of the most ingenious things that he's done is show me how to get the flop out of my wobbles. Really, really enjoyed that. that oh, with the O-ring? Yeah, that was pretty that was pretty cool. I like that. Uh, he's done a lot more things than that, but I just said that that was when I was like, whoa, I gotta watch that again. I was you know when you're kind of watching something to give your friend the view and you you got something on the background you might be text texting something on your phone and then you kind of catch, oh what did I miss? You have to go back and watch it again. Yeah. Remember yeah. having one of those moments. Also, uh, thank you, Miguel Martinez, for being a guest on a, a TTS yeah, text talking show. Oh, awesome, dude. We appreciate you. You had a lot of good input. Uh, look for text talking shop on YouTube, text talking shop, and on Instagram, text underscore talking underscore shop. Uh, give us suggestions. You know, when you guys see this, if there's another panel discussion, this was kind of just a, you know, shoot from the hip kind of video. You know, we just talked about whatever came up, wherever the, the dis discussion led us. We'll be happy to do any kind of panel discussion, you know, with any topic you guys would like to see. Um, if there's a certain group of texts you'd want to see do a panel discussion together, you know, you put throw that in the comments. Say you want to see uh, Kyle, Dave, and May. Do, throw it in there. You know, we, we'll, we'll make it happen. You, just so you can see people's different point of views, different perspectives, you know, different groups that, have, that you haven't seen work together. It's kind of like what today was. This was Kyle and I have done something together, but I don't think either of us have done anything with Davion before. Have you, have you, Kyle? I feel like I've had one with Davion, maybe, or maybe that's something we haven't published. I don't know. I know I've video chatted with him before. Yeah, so so this was actually pretty cool. I enjoyed working with doing this, doing something with Davion because it's been seven months and all we've ever done is talked or texted. You know, this was cool. We actually got to do something that you guys are going to see us doing together. So that was really cool. And on that note, guys, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, can't promise you when you're watching this that it was filmed recently, but when you're watching it, it means it needed to be uploaded. <laughs> So, <laughs> so on that note, you guys have a great night. All right.